A GINA target vehicle 5005 was launched on July 18, 1966 at 8.39 p.m. UTC from Launch Complex 14 at Cape Canaveral. It was successfully sent into orbit roughly one orbit ahead of Gemini 10, which aimed to rendezvous with it. The Agena could provide roughly 1,400 meters per second of velocity change, or delta V, about 3,000 miles an hour, to help the Gemini spacecraft change orbits, and for the first time, that capability would actually be put to use. Gemini 10 carried John Young on his second space flight, and Michael Collins on his first. Even before their launch, it must have been a relief for the astronauts to see their Agena make orbit after all the trouble the previous target vehicles had caused. The only other Agena target vehicle to go as planned so far had been the one for Gemini 8, and the mission plan for Gemini 10 included a visit to that one as well. Young and Collins would be the first to conduct a double rendezvous. Phasing with that second Agena meant that the first Agena had to boost them to an apoapsis of 763 kilometers, the highest any astronaut had been to that point. One experiment during the mission was to check the crew's radiation exposure at their high orbit as they passed through the South Atlantic anomaly where the inner radiation belt can be as low as 200 kilometers above the surface. They found that their radiation exposure was much less than expected. Gemini 10 was launched at 10.20 p.m. UTC from Launch Complex 19 at Cape Canaveral, and it accomplished the rendezvous and docking with its own Agena, 5005, in just six hours. The mission plan was packed because of all the objectives left unachieved in Gemini 8 and 9, but the first task was to use Agena 5005's engine to match the orbit of the Gemini 8 Agena 5003 with two burns. The astronauts slept between the two burns, and once they were on their way to the Gemini 8 Agena, Michael Collins conducted the first of two planned spacewalks. This first EVA just required him to stand up inside the pod and take photos for about 49 minutes. It was even simpler than Ed White's EVA, but still the astronauts encountered problems as both of them got an eye irritation due to a lithium hydroxide leak. Lithium hydroxide is used to clean out carbon dioxide from the air, but it's not supposed to get into the actual air supply. They solved the problem, but it seemed ominous for the second, much more complicated EVA that the first simple one had to be cut a few minutes short. They undocked from their own Agena more than 100 kilometers away from the Gemini 8 Agena, which was already out of power. They couldn't dock to that old unpowered Agena, but would rather close to within a few meters, and then Collins would EVA to it and pick up an experiment on it, while John Young kept the Gemini in a steady position. To reach the old Agena, they couldn't use the radar, as they had done with the first one, because of the power loss on this one. So they closed the distance by sight. For the EVA across the distance, Collins would have to use the handheld maneuvering unit, HHMU, which is basically a nitrogen thruster gun. He would still be connected to the Gemini with a very long tether, but this proved to be trouble as it got tangled. Before getting to that part of the EVA though, he first had to get a micrometeorite collector from the side of the Gemini, and found even this first step difficult in the same way that Gene Cernan did in Gemini 9A. Collins pressed on to the Agena part, but was frustrated because there were no handholds on the Agena. He ultimately grabbed onto some of the Agena's wires and got the experiment, another micrometeorite collector, from there. During that time, while both astronauts were busy, the first micrometeorite experiment floated out of the spacecraft and was lost. There were other tasks to be performed, but they were running low on fuel and decided to wrap up the EVA after 39 minutes. Even getting the hatch closed proved to be a pain because of the long tether. NASA seemed to have rendezvous and adjusting orbits down, but EVA competency was elusive. Thank you for watching this mission profile of Gemini 10.